for five months and we lived out of one suitcase each. It just created this space where you realize how much you don't need in order to to live and to thrive. For me personally, at, at that phase of my life, I almost felt like I had to back myself into corners and fight my way out. Welcome back to another episode of The Burn. I am Ben Newman, and you've learned to understand how we do this every single week. We're going to bring you a story of an athlete, an entertainer, a celebrity, individuals from the business world who prove for all of us that why and purpose is not enough. It's the underlying burn that ignites your why and purpose and causes you to show up on the days you don't feel like it, and especially after you win. Today is a very special opportunity for me to welcome two dear friends and long-term friends of mine, which we will get into, Matthew and Shannon Missimer. Uh, they are two individuals who have been successful in both of their rights before they ever even met, and then now they have made courageous steps as parents, as business owners, to turn away from what's easy but by staying connected to your burn, to chase the difficult, to make a bigger impact in a world where sometimes we're told it's not your time and you shouldn't do those courageous things and you should do the things that are easy and comfortable. So you're going to learn from this episode, all the years that we've known each other, how proud I am of everything that they're doing, uh, how we've remained uh, part of each other's lives for over 15 years now. And it's these types of relationships in my life that make life so meaningful. So with no further ado, welcome Shannon and welcome Matthew to a long overdue <laughs> opportunity for us to spend time together on The Burn. Uh, thank you for having us, Ben. It's so nice being here. We're excited. So I want to take you guys back to many have heard the story of you know, boot camps and events that our company throws. And, you know, I've been doing this work in this space for almost 20 years and had the crazy idea to throw a boot camp back in 2019. So, yes, that means 15 years ago, we started throwing events and throwing boot camps. The first ever boot camp was a very small boot camp. Uh, thank goodness, Amy, uh, my wife, for those of you that don't know, uh, Thank goodness Amy didn't ask me how profitable that first event was because we did not make any money at an event that only had nine people. Uh, most people would have given up at their first event having nine people. The event was in St. Louis, which is certainly not as beautiful as Puerto Rico, where we'll do this year, or the Virgin Islands, or Vegas, where we've done some amazing boot camps. And Shannon and Matt have been part of many boot camps but Matt was part of our first boot camp. And Matt, what I would love for you to do is just take us back, because we're not here to talk about boot camps, we're here to talk about the two of you, but even before boot camp, and it's so meaningful to me that uh, not only did you come to one boot camp, but I think Puerto Rico will be like your 10th boot camp. He's the all-time <laughs> record holder for most, uh, <laughs> attending the most boot camps ever. Do but I get a you, trophy? <laughs> you, I, we should get you a little trophy in Puerto Rico. <laughs> You know, you came to pick me up when I was giving a speech for the financial firm you were working for way back in the day, which is about a year before that boot camp. So, you know, 16 years ago. <clears throat> what was it in you 16 years ago, just getting your start, showing courage back then, the way that you've now shown courage now, to say, hey, I'll go pick up that guy at the airport. I, I didn't know you. You didn't know me. Somewhere along the line, I don't know if you were forced to do it. I never asked you, but you did it, which I appreciated. You came to pick up the speaker uh, for the event the next day, and little did I know, 16 years later, we would develop this amazing relationship. But take me, take me back to the courage that it took starting a business then and those little decisions that you would make to do the things that were uncomfortable, which led to us meeting. Well, in that moment, you know, I don't remember specifically why I went into my managing partner's office at the time and said, hey, can I go pick this guy up at the airport? <laughs> um, you know, flying into the city of brotherly love is 
not that welcoming. So I always <laughs> thought, well, if we're going to fly in these speakers, why wouldn't I go pick them up? And then I would get some one-on-one -on -one time. And then I would always get invited to the events that were being hosted for that speaker. So the courage for me was more practical at that moment of, well, this is happening. Why, why don't I take this opportunity to meet this, this guy? Um, and I remember you getting in my car and instantly I knew I'm like, oh boy, <laughs> this is, <laughs> this relationship is probably going to change my life. And, <clears throat> you know, we shook hands that evening and we made a bet watching a basketball game that night about MDRT. And it was so neat to follow through on that bet and fly to St. Louis and take you and Amy out to dinner and follow through on that. So these were just moments and times where for me personally, at, at that phase of my life, I almost felt like I had to back myself into corners and fight my way out to succeed um, because fear was a big part of my life. And I wanted to be so successful and overcome that fear. Which is, uh, you know, we hit it off right away. I know uh, you and Shannon hit it off uh, right away. And uh, no surprise that uh, you and I both being hard charging individuals. And I've always loved that about you, the fight, the, no fear, you know, things that come from childhood, but deciding to persevere and just, I'm going to fight and make it happen. Shannon, I've always seen the same in you, which probably explains why you guys now have a beautiful family and uh, you've literally taken on the world together, which we'll get into <laughs> even from a parenting standpoint, you guys have done the uncomfortable and been courageous and created amazing experiences for your family. But what has it been for you? Why have you been so courageous? What has caused you to to do the things? Or what was the burn for you that caused you to always do, I would almost say, the the not the normal path? <clears throat> yeah. You know, it's so funny. I, I didn't always know what it was. You know, and I was that person. I graduated college early because I was like, I got to go make money. You know, there was just this belief of like, I'll get to a point where I will, I will make it, you know, I'll get to this place where I will, I'll do the thing and I'll feel like I succeeded, you know, and it was this drive to like, want to get to that point. Um, and I, I think it was definitely the people I was hanging out with and seeing, you know, their drive and their motivation. But um, I don't know. I think there was something that shifted for me later in life and really becoming a mom that connected me to something that was actually more of a burn, you know? And I think mm. um, it was like more depth to it of not just wanting to get to the thing, but wanting to live a life that had meaning to it, you know, that I could, I could feel like there was purpose and I could feel like there was, you know, really intention in the work that I was doing. So I would say, you know, my early twenties, there was just this, want to find success, want to be in the professional world, want to be taken seriously, you know, like just want to, to thrive in business. Um, but I would say becoming a mom shifted that and connected with me to a depth of my why that I didn't realize existed before that. Mm. So, so powerful. And in your, in your parenting, before we get to uh, the success that you guys now are having and the motion of gratitude and, and the movement and the purpose and the alignment you have together to, to change the world, um, and you're already doing so many significant things to change the world and how people show up. But let, let's talk about parenting, because you both had success. You chose the uncomfortable, which we'll get to, to step out of the normal success. Or, you know, Matthew, you similar to me, successful advisor, and neither of us are advisors anymore, right? And mm -hmm. both of us having a level of success where you could have said, my goodness, why would you ever walk away? Like, You'd almost reach the point it's kind of easy at that point you just kind of show up and do what you're supposed to do but you guys also haven't taken the easy path as parents you've provided experiences you know so oftentimes we as parents say oh well it's going to go so fast and we want to provide experiences you guys have done that in multiple states multiple countries <laughs> rvs planes trains automobiles yes. Yes. Tell us a little bit about your philosophy of, I would almost call it, you live once, you better do what you want to do and experience these experiences with your children before it's too late. <clears throat> yeah. You take that one. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I had to re -success redefine success when I became a stay-at-home mom. So for me, before becoming a mom and staying home with my kids, external success was my definition, right? So that that shift of 
really that external validation and being in the world to now I'm home. It's me, these kids, as we all know, parenting can be kind of a thankless <laughs> experience those first couple years, you know, you, you have to show up for yourself in a way to uh, really redefine what you want those moments to look like. And for me, very on in early on in the parenting journey, I realized that this could be completely our journey. We, there, there's not a rule book. There's not a playbook. There's not one way in which this parenting journey has to be done. And it just felt like success to me was knowing my kids, being a family and choosing to live life as we define it. Um, and I think, you know, the last couple of years for us became an opportunity to really figure out what's important, you know, and, mm. and I think we were given a moment in time that we felt wasn't necessarily going to last forever. So it's like, let's make the most of it. You know, this is a time where our kids are still young and we saw through their experience of life, how much they were learning to say, yeah, yeah, it's homeschool. Yeah, it's world school. You know, like you, there's such an opportunity to see them thrive by being in the world that um, it was, it was easy for us to say, this is an opportunity for us to, to go and experience life. And, allow life to unfold rather than <clears throat> saying, you know, like this is the path we have to take. So it's been a heck of a journey. Um, and, it's been <laughs> my comment on this is Shannon, although I was driving the RV, she was driving the bus. Um, <laughs> so this was very much Shannon's idea. And for me, it was a little self-serving. So when COVID happened, if I were to get out of my bed, go to my desk and go to my Peloton, and that was my rotation, I would have lost my mind. So the idea of getting the RV and going out into the world and seeing how the world was responding and doing it as a family, it was incredible. Mm -hmm. And it really opened up Pandora's box for us of how you could live differently. And I mean, our company is the motion of gratitude. It is the opposite of going through the motions. And that looks different for everyone. But for me, that rhythm of that triangle would be very much just going through the motions. And I couldn't do that. So what began as this is fun and a good idea turned into, wow, I really have this opportunity to get to know my children and come together as a family unit. And home was wherever we were. And one of those homes was in Costa Rica. And uh, I think it was the first time in, in the history of uh, me being invited on to a podcast where I receive a text message, electricity's out, we don't know what's going on, we're in Costa Rica, we got to reschedule. And uh, any anything for the two of you, so it was no big deal. But I was, uh, I was like, are you serious? Like, this is the day the, the, the electricity's going to go out the whole town? <laughs> But so what was the what was the greatest lesson? Because I think once again, people take what's easy, they take what's yeah. normal, they just keep going through those proverbial motions of life. And what was the greatest lesson that you learned being in Costa Rica, literally taking your family to another country to spend time and the schooling they received? It was just so different than what most people would ever even take a chance to do. What was the greatest lesson you learned as a family and life lesson? I, I think for me, one of the main things that I look back on is we went for five months and we lived out of one suitcase each. Like it's, it, it just created this space where you realize how much you don't need in order to, to live and to thrive. And you go to these, these places where it's about being together and it's about being outside and it's about being a family. And for me, it was just such a reminder that sometimes I think in the world, we think we need all this stuff. You know, like we think we need all these things and our kids have to be like in all these sports or in all these organized things, which are wonderful. And for this moment in time, for five months, for us to say, we're going to disconnect from all of it. There's no Amazon, you know, there's no packages getting delivered to, you know, wherever we are off the dirt roads in Costa Rica. But not only did we just survive the situation, like it was such a beautiful experience for us to see like what we are capable of doing. So um, I think that was what was really special for me is just the simplicity of all of it, just to really let go of everything you think defines who you are and just be. Have you thought about writing a book, but just don't have the time? We would love to help you make that dream come true this year. Introducing BNC Publishing. 
we offer an in-house three-step process to help you bring your book to life. The whole process only takes 60 to 90 days. Compared to 18 months for traditional publishing methods, we work fast. To see if we are a good fit to work together on your project, email our team at info at bennewman.net. That's info at bennewman.net. Now, back to the show. I, I think as a total side note, I'm going to let the family know that we're going to temporarily pretend like we're in Costa Rica so there's no Amazon because it is a problem <laughs> At our houses, I think it is for most Americans because <laughs> yes. everything is way too exciting. I mean, you need a tooth- toothbrush these days, like order it on Amazon and it shows up at your house in an hour. I mean, yeah. the world is is moving so fast, which brings up an interesting next point where I really want to spend a, a good amount of time. And it, it's with your business. And, you know, along the journey of you choosing to do things differently and your way and experiences and stepping into things that other people would never even have a chance because they weren't willing to get into an RV. They're not willing to do the things that are outside of the regular structures of the four walls of our home. Uh, The motion of gratitude that that seed was born through these amazing experiences and the two of you slowing down in life. Uh, I encourage everybody, and we're going to make it so easy to follow the movement, the company, your opportunities where Motion of Gratitude is now being brought into corporate settings for corporate gratitude into school systems. And so you guys will be able to follow Shannon and Matt and their business. We're going to make it super easy. But you guys have branded this thing. I mean, you got the Motion of Gratitude vehicle going down the street. I mean, it is, it's just been amazing. You guys have built it, you've owned it, you've leaned into it, and I'm so proud of what you're now taking to the world. But tell us about the the seed in your mind where you said, okay, here's an idea where we could teach people to slow down, we could teach people to have gratitude, we could teach people to put pen to paper. Take us back to that moment where you looked at each other and said, we're going for this, where Matt, you said, I'm out, we're retiring. Shannon, (laughs) I'm not going back to a corporate setting. Because I know, Shannon, you are so driven and you were successful in your own right. And you could have gone back and taken a corporate job. And you guys said, no, we're doing it our way again. Who wants to start with uh, with how this, <laughs> this plays out? <clears throat> yeah. So this whole, everything about the business, everything about the motion of gratitude was born out of personal need. Like it's, it's all from personal experience. Uh, this started in 2018 with, uh, at the time I was home with, we only had our two girls at the time. We didn't have our son. And, you know, I I was just at a point in my life where our second, she took a little bit of time to settle into the world. Um, she, she was, had deep emotions and, you know, mom was the only one that could comfort her. She didn't take a bottle. She, you know, whatever she needed, anything, it was, it, she needed me Um, and as a mom it's one of the most special places to be and it can be one of the most intense places if you don't understand how to take care of yourself and uh, for myself at the time i i didn't understand the value of slowing down Um, and i thought that this is something i could just run through like i ran through everything else you know Um, and it was really through that time with quinn where you know matt came home from work one day and I was knee deep in everything that was going wrong, right? It's like uh, he had a long day and there was just this space of kind of dumping on him all the things that didn't go right. And you know, Matt, with like his heart of gold, he looks at me and he's like, Shannon, you're gonna have to be a little bit more grateful. And it's like, what? Like, what (laughs) are you talking about? I didn't sleep on the couch that night for the record. (laughs) You know you were damn close though. (laughs) Oh yeah, oh yeah. It was like, how, how is that the word? You know, like, why is that the word that Matt chose? And, you know, it's, it's stuck with me. And as, as I worked through the anger and kind of the frustration of it all, it, it literally got to a point where I was like, he is, he's right. Like I have, I dreamed of this moment of being home with my babies. I dreamed of this, this house, this us being married, the healthy kids, you know, like there's so many things that I dreamed of that I was missing. They were still happening all around me, but in that moment, the the deep intensity was taking over. Um, so it became very clear that I knew that I didn't want to go back to work at that time. I wanted to be home. I wanted to raise my kids. Um, and through that, I knew that I had to do something different. And the choice that I made was I was going to get really intentional with my gratitude practice. Um, and it was literally 
through the intentional practice of waking up and, you know, focusing on my gratitude, it was a matter of days, maybe weeks, where the things that were making me cry two weeks before were now making me laugh because I was like, oh my gosh, like there's so much beauty still here. And just mm. the shift in perspective and, you know, I, it just became one of those things, the more that I got into the gratitude and the more I dove into being present and mindfulness and what that actually is, um, it made me realize that, Gratitude is talked about a lot, but we're not encouraged how to feel it all of the time. Mm. Um, so it was through my experience where I learned to feel it in a depth that I hadn't before that uh, it was like, yeah, there's something here. <laughs> and so that kind of became the beginning of it. I kind of looked back at the experience and started to share it with Matt, started to share it with other people. And, you know, as Matt started to really come into the space, it's like, we know that we can support people on this part of their journey, right? There is such incredible resources in different areas that people can be supported and it's how can we support them from this space and kind of meet them where they are. You know, I was a, I was a stay at home mom who wasn't looking for a coach at the time because what do you coach somebody towards, right? <laughs> but but there, there were things that we were able to explore and you know, from there, it just became a lifestyle. It became how we raise our kids, how we show up in the world. Uh, you know, the RV life, the Costa Rica, it just literally brought us to this place of this is how we want to live every day. And it's not that every day is filled with sunshine, sun, sunshine and happy things, but it's, it's choosing to intentionally focus on what is continuing to go right, even when there's some big parts of life that might mm. not be going the way that we want them to. You know, one of my favorite words is intentional, and you've used it a few times in your answer. Matt, if you could help us better understand just some of the intentional components when people step into the concept of gratitude with you, from the beautiful gift boxes that you'll send to the matching bracelets that you both have on your wrist to the journaling of the motion of gratitude. Help us understand why you've been so intentional in helping people connect to the importance of gratitude and how you go about doing that through the process of, you know, what you've coined as the term gratosis. Well, and I wanted to kind of take a step back also in the history here. So like the firm that we were working at when this was all happening was investing so much money into me on a day to day basis, right? We were, I was being groomed to be in this leadership role. And I think we take that for granted when we're working for these big corporations. So what I was, as I was evolving and seeing what Shannon was not receiving, that was teaching me what I needed to do. Um, and it inspired me to share with others who don't have all of those resources breathed into them on a daily basis. Um, and the evolution of, of getting to this point of this intentionality around gratitude and like our tagline is feel the impact. Um, mm -hmm. And, and feel the impact of an intentional gratitude practice that to your point, that word is critical. Um, and the evolution of me leaving the financial services business and getting to this moment was I was, I was obsessing on a daily basis around the paradoxes of life of watching clients sacrificing their lives in the pursuit of capital, I would help them retire. And inevitably, something would happen where they wouldn't be happy. And that paradox started to drive me insane. So transitioning into this world where every day you feel the impact of intentional gratitude and everything that you do is a, a, a trigger or an anchor. So like the bracelets, it's an anchor. It anchors me into a moment where if my son or daughter is doing something that is triggering me, I remember, it's all about remembering that I get to be a father in this moment. And yes, this moment right here is hard, but so many men around the world would either one, crave to have a relationship with their father, or two, to be a father in the first place. So the intensity of that, and and I'm an intense person, that's who I've always been. Um, so as Shannon was building out these products and the box and the color schemes, and the logo, everything behind the brand of the motion of gratitude is designed to help you remember that this is all a miracle, <laughs> like this, this whole thing. Um, and, and that's where every morning I wake up, I wish myself happy birthday. 
I meditate, I journal, and I read my vision. It has to mm. happen. I love it. Tell us a little bit more, Shannon, and then uh, Matt, I'll, I'll kick it back over to you because there's one client in particular for me with all my work in sports that uh, I just, I was so proud when I heard it. So I'm going to make everybody wait on it. But Shannon, tell us a little bit more, the color scheme, the boxes, the intentionality, why that word is so important to you when it comes to your mission. <clears throat> so the word actually didn't, Fully, fully sink in for me of what intention was until I really started this practice. And I think, you know, as I shared before, there's a lot of talk about gratitude, but the, if it's not something that we're doing intentionally, consciously, you know, whatever that means, we kind of miss the, the beauty of what it creates. Um, and for me, I felt like if somebody was going to go through something like this experience, I want them to feel like it's more than just a program. Like I want it to feel like it's something that's why we call it the experience. It's meant to be an experience for you to, to fully allow yourself to feel the impact of what gratitude can do in your life. And, you know, as I was building it out, I wanted, I wanted to feel proud of what we've created. You know, the products are made here in the US. They're eco-conscious. It's FSC certified. I searched out um, a publisher in Arizona to to have everything made here. Uh, the books are stamped with iron stamps because I, I wanted it to still have meaning. Like sometimes I think that that gets missed in the pieces and, and um, you know, the color, the chartreuse color is so meaningful. And there's a whole nother story behind how we got to that color. But I think, you know, it being something that's bright that you see and I think symbols sometimes can pull us in different directions. But when it's a color, there's just something really special about that. You know, like now not only when I see chartreuse on my wrist, do I think about it, but now when I see it on people's clothing, I, you know, I think about it. It's now this color that that it becomes a visual cue in my life to kind of bring me back into it, the intentional presence. So, um, yeah, there was just it felt like if we were going to do this, we were going to put our heart on it and it was going to be felt by the people that are actually experiencing it. So that's that was really, you know, that was what was on my heart through through the building of the physical product. Well, for for anybody who's listening, who has maybe listened too much to their self-talk, they've had self-doubt. Maybe they've heard from friends, family, loved ones. Oh, you know, are you sure you want to take these courageous steps, you know? I'm so proud of all of you because you put your heart into it. You leaned into it with your heart. You leaned into it with your belief. And I think people feel that when they speak to you when it comes to opportunity, whether you're being brought in in a corporate setting for trainings and presentations and opportunities to teach and help people slow down, whether it is in school systems, uh, whether it is through coaching, whether it is through your podcast, all the different platforms in which you're growing the brand. But where I was so proud and it's like I had to wait all these years to finally get in at Alabama, which was like the pinnacle, right? You know, I have North Dakota State, Alabama, Kansas State, all these big football programs, right? And you guys just, you just started IMG. So, you know, all of a sudden Matt calls me and he's like, hey, we've got this, you know, just real nonchalant. You know, we've got this opportunity at IMG to go do a presentation. I'm like, Matt, like, do, do you know what you're saying? And, you know, it, I waited all these years. And I think there's just something special. I, I think you're rewarded in life when you believe and you're courageous and you take action. And uh, you guys skipped all the, the, the steps that I skipped and you went right for the pinnacle. But, you know, IMG is the pinnacle of high school athletics. It's where parents are sending their kids to you know, who have been blessed with talent to almost like guaranteed you're going to become a professional athlete, for sure a collegiate athlete. Mm -hmm. And you all have had the opportunity to now begin the process, initial presentations, work at IMG. What was that experience after Matt, I helped you realize what that was you were walking in? I think Shannon <laughs> knew, but like, I don't know if you quite knew. <laughs> ha having that experience on such a big stage um, so early in wanting to bring this into the sports world, which was another courageous step. Like, can we do this in sports? Uh, 
Tell us a little bit about that experience and what causes you guys to continue to just go for it in a world where most people seek comfort and waiting on the sidelines just to kind of see how it plays out. So going flying down to IMG and getting the tour of the campus and meeting the mental toughness coaches and it was so rewarding because you got to see the best of the best and how they approach the holistic well-being of the child, of the athlete. And it was very rewarding for me, um, regardless to what happens there, it inspires me to bring any aspect of that to my local high schools. If I can help the local high schools adopt 10% of the gift that these children are receiving at the most elite institution for high school in the United States, that inspires me. And I love breathing into people that don't have that opportunity because of my upbringing. So, and helping athletes is so inspiring for me because they are the leaders of this country. Um, not all of them, but these people, one day they will no longer be able to play on that field, but they're gonna play on the field of life and they're gonna win. So if we can be a part of that equation and I can see professional athletes wearing this bracelet and adopting gratitude into the, lo the local sports programs that they're hosting, that just lights me up. So that's how I saw that opportunity with so many win, win, wins. Um, and, and, you know, you've taught me my life, particularly over the last five years, seduction of success. So I might skip over it because it's just the beginning. It is literally, um, it, it, it is valuable and it's just another day for me to be out there spreading the message. Mm. Shannon? To, yeah, I have some, I think what was, what was really exciting for me, because I think a lot of people throw gratitude to the side as a tool, right? So like people are like, what are you doing talking about gratitude in a sports setting? You know, like that's a lot of the, the thought process that comes up. And I think for me, what was so impactful about it and what's uh, beautiful about what IMG does where Matt was talking about is the fact that they take this holistic approach to their student athletes and they have a whole department focused on the mental well-being of the athletes so there was I believe there's about 33 staff that focus solely on the mental support of the athletes which in the world that we live in right now is monumental <laughs> and to be able to be in that setting, um, we had the opportunity to present to that mental health staff and share about the research, the science of gratitude, how the impact of the support that it provides, whether it be on the field, in the classroom, to really dive into the science of gratitude and talk about it in that setting to me was so exciting that it's really bringing the science and the story together, which I think we are at that place in our world where there's so much opportunity for that, that mental support. And I, and I think one of the most impactful things for me was at the end, the, um, the head of their leadership department stood up and raised his hand. And he said, you know, I just want you to know, like, keep going. He's like, this is one of the pillars mm. of the work that I do. And it is so important and gratitude needs to be talked about. And it is something that we need to develop more, you know, resources around. So to me, that was whatever happens here, like I'm going, I'm running <laughs> full force because it's, it's, it's such a beautiful way to, to speak into that space. And I think to see that people are really starting to see that connection and realize that, you know it, the mental well-being of an athlete defines a lot of athletes. <laughs> like, yeah. If that mental piece isn't there, you can have an incredible physical human, but if that mental piece isn't, um, isn't in connection, there's a lot that can go in different directions. And there's such an opportunity to support people from that mental space. And I think the fact that IMG sees it um, and and there's so much development there, it just speaks to opportunities that of ways to support kids and students all over the world. So I think that was what was so inspirational to us. It's like if an institution where people are working really hard to put their kids in these spaces to receive these educations, to know that we can bring those, bring that to other spaces, I think was really powerful mm. for us. 
I'm just so so incredibly proud of uh, the work that you're doing. And, you know, one of the things that I love all, all these years of working together, it's, you know, you guys don't choose to come to a boot camp for entertainment. You know, yes, we do create some amazing experiences <laughs> yes, you do, at, our, at our boot camps. But, you know, it, it's when you say little things, Matt, like, you know, five years ago, seduction of success, and then you take it to IMG. It was the same thing for me with Alabama when Coach Saban, you know, hired me, when, you know, Coach Kleiman, you know, made sure that like, hey, if I'm taking this job at Kansas State, I'm only taking it if you're coming with me, you know, things like that, that, you know, we just, there are these huge victories of life, but life is about relationships slowing down and, and, and having that gratitude. And so I just, I'm just so appreciative that you take those lessons because I don't get seduced by success. And, you know, I, I think for us, you know, the two of you as leaders and coaches in this world, you know, I've said it so many times, we can only lead people to the level of discipline in which you live. And you guys don't just teach the motion of gratitude. You live it. You own it. That discipline is how you live. It's, it's how you teach. It's how you raise your children. It's what you've leaned into. And it's just why I encourage everybody to do your research, to learn more. We're going to make it so easy for you to stay connected with Shannon and Matt. But uh, I just I just wanted to tell you how proud I am of the two of you before I, I talk about one last thing, which is uh, Matt becoming an author, uh, which was just absolutely awesome as well. Uh, little side note, because this is going to be a special moment. There are no coincidences. But as I asked this question about the paradox of having your shit together and the journey of awakening your mind, uh, how fitting that it just turned 4.44 p.m., yes, Mr. Matt Missimer, <laughs> while we are recording this. It's almost going to bring awesome. tears to my eyes Aww, because the number 44 has always been um, my number since I was a little kid. Those of you that have done my crazy workout know that there's 4.44 throughout it. And, you know, I get to learn in these relationships. You know, it's not just me being the teacher. I get to learn from Shannon. I get to learn from Matt. And Matt, you came up to me in Vegas. I mean, this just last year. And I didn't know all these years. Literally, 44 for me started out as Anthony Peeler, an old lefty jump shooter from University of Missouri. And that's why my kids wear 44. It's why I wore 44. Like, people want to know the significance. But I didn't know all these years, 444 throughout my workout, passwords, everything that I, I have done that you shared with me that that's really the number of the angels, which made me realize that number was probably brought into my heart because of my mom being with me. And, you know, it's kind of fun now. You'll text me screenshots of 444 sometimes. Literally, I cannot believe we're recording. I can. And we cross over 444. <laughs> I'm like, how fitting. Um, awesome. But uh, I just, I, I had to share that. If you want to know more about 444, <laughs> come see us in Puerto Rico and work <laughs> yeah, out yeah. with us. Yeah. There you go. But you have a book that's up on your bookshelf. There's multiple copies, but I want everybody <laughs> to be able to see the book, The Paradox of Having Your Shit Together. Why was this so important? As if you weren't busy enough, three beautiful children, really getting out of the gates as fast as could be. I wouldn't even call it a startup because you guys are just running at opportunity at such a fast level, making a difference. What made you decide to also write a book? And, uh, you know, we, we've been able to help, I think it's over 30 individuals become authors through our relationship with Game Changer Publishing and Chris Cawley, who I know is, you know, now become a friend of yours as she's a dear friend of mine. And, you know, the publisher that, that we use why was it so important for you to slow down and get this message out and to get the book out and to get your story out? It's a big question. Well, um, before I start there, one, I know how to get the money out of your ATM because your password is probably <laughs> 444. Um, <clears throat> hey, but come and try to get that card from me. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not messing with that. Um, I did wake up at 444 to go to my hot yoga today. Um so the book, <clears throat> you know, I grew up in a certain setting and I didn't have access to a lot. So what motivated me primarily as a young professional was things, uh, materialism. And at the time, I didn't call it that. I called it a reward system. Um, the nice watches, the nice, the nice cars, the beautiful house. 
Um, so the beginning of that book is all of the paradoxes that I had to explore in my 20s and early 30s. And <clears throat> fortunately, I had a, an event in my life that allowed us to really take a step back and breathe financially. Um, and, and in that moment, probably about three months after that transition happened in my life, everything felt backwards. <laughs> Like, mm -mm. I didn't want to put the nice suits on because I didn't care anymore. I, I didn't put the nice watch on because I didn't, I was doing that for other people to impress them or to press upon them that I had earned the right to manage their money. Um, so the first part of that book is all the things that I hope is maybe a shortcut for people <laughs> to, mm. to, to not say it's, it's great to have nice things, but that I had taken it to a different level. Those nice things is all I thought about. Um, and then I went through the journey of being a father, and I thought, now I have all these nice things, but no matter how nice of a thing I have, if I don't learn to, to level up as a human, I'm not going to be able to hold space for my kids. So mm. that was eye-opening. And ultimately, this led to the middle of the book, which is a journey that I took in Costa Rica, which Aaron Rodgers has taken, which many professional people have taken. And and I went on that journey in Costa Rica, and most people do not publish their notes. But I, I, I wanted to. I wanted to share my heart with people to understand the complexity of the human psyche and the beauty. It's, it's amazing. And then the end of the book, I felt... I need to teach in a way of like how to integrate all this new information into your life and do it in a practical way. And so many people go on the spiritual journey and end up broke and single. I, and I don't like it. I, I wanted to change the paradigm. So I wanted to go on the spiritual journey and end up married and living in abundance. And I, I felt compelled to write the book as part of my healing journey, to be honest. When we were in Costa Rica, I mean, yes, it was a beautiful place to live, but in the same way that a caterpillar turns to mush before it turns to a butterfly, part of writing that book was my mush. And mm. putting it on that paper cleared it. And and I get text messages once a week of someone multiple times a week of just like, thank you for writing that. I wish I would have I wish I would have read that 20 years ago. And that little nod allows me to keep going. So the book is a, a self-fulfilling positive loop to help me to stay on track. I love it. It is uh, to, to see you say you wanted to become an author and then to watch you become an author and then to hear you having that impact and the impact of your business and the courage you both continue to show up with is just ab absolutely incredible. And I just... I can't say it enough how just blessed I feel, how grateful I am um, to be part of this journey with you. And we've now been recording for 44 minutes and 44 mm -hmm. seconds. So I'm just, I'm going to let people know we're going to have fun with this because this yeah. is, this is what we do. see it now. <laughs> if yeah. that's the number of the angels, we see it all the time yeah. in our house. It's 444 and yeah. everybody yells it and screams it. It's, it's amazing. But I'd love to leave everybody with this. Um, once again, we're going to make it so easy for everybody to pick up a copy of the book and to be able to follow and to better understand and to become part of the motion of gratitude. What is what, from each of you, what is something you can share that would immediately allow somebody through your work, through your coaching, through your teaching, what's an immediate action step that somebody can take to help them just slow down and bring more gratitude into their lives. I'd, I'd love to finish that way with hearing from both of you. <clears throat> you want to go? Yep. You go first. Okay. I think what, what comes up for me is there's so much power in writing something down. And I think we can very much take that for granted. And I think a lot of times when we think about gratitude, it's like, well, I, I thought about something that I was grateful for. And that's a great starting point. But if you can get in the process of truly getting your thoughts of gratitude and get them on paper, it will allow you to deeper experience the gratitude and feel it almost a second time. And I think that's what's so powerful about it. And that's something that can instantly begin the shift of the perspective. 
I think one of the most important things that I learned through all of this is I didn't need to shift my external world. I needed to shift my perspective. So I think that's a beautiful way in which that process can be started instantly. Mine is an anchor. This bracelet, although it may seem silly to some, it gets me out of a lot of squirrely situations mentally. And my phone, my notebooks, everything is a gratitude anchor in my life. And that's because I battle my mind a lot. So this bracelet means so much to me. And it's, it's, it's why I want to create a social movement around gratitude. Because when I go out into the community, the places we go to eat, the restaurants that mm. we love, the owners are wearing this bracelet. It, it makes me so happy going out into the world and seeing people wearing this bracelet because I know they're thinking differently. I just, intentional. I'll leave everybody with intentional. You know, th this I, I made an intentional choice that this was going to be a longer episode when you have two amazing friends on one screen rather than rather than one. Even though we teased, didn't we, Shannon, that we were going to leave Matt <laughs> off? Maybe just have a little bubble head or a pop up, and it was just going to be the two of us on the screen. But he this knows has he's been, loved. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this has been this has been so fun. And you know, for for those of you listening, I I, I want to share something else uh, with with you, which makes me emotional. Um, I've done what I've done for a long time, and uh, I always try to show up and do it as best as I possibly can and as intentional as I can. And Matt, for you and I to have been on this ride together for 16 years, um, it's these types of relationships that just that make me emotional because this is what life's all about. Yes. You know, you picked me up 16 years ago and it wasn't just a ride. It was the beginning of a journey we would take for the rest of our lives. Mm -hmm. And we didn't know it then, uh, but we've we've remained close. And um, we keep getting closer. There have been gaps, but never very far. You know, we were always a, a message away or a voice note away or a question away. Um, but I just, I really appreciate uh, how you show up in life. Uh, I appreciate the continued opportunity um, to be a part of your life. And Shannon, the same for you. And I just... I'm grateful for both of you. Uh, I'll continue to be the greatest support I possibly can to push your mission forward because uh, the work that you're doing is going to change the world. And I think it's the individuals who choose to be courageous like the two of you had, who choose to seek the uncomfortable are the ones who will really make a profound impact and leave a legacy. So I just, I'm so very proud of the motion of gratitude, proud of you. And uh, I love you both. And uh, just grateful that we were able to spend this time together on the burn. We love Thank you too. So much, Ben. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I don't always uh, do this. I do it from time to time, but I'm going to ask um, everybody to make sure that maybe you listen twice. These are longer. This is a longer episode than normal. Listen to it twice. Maybe listen to parts of it. You say, I need to go back and listen to that in again. I want you to choose to be intentional because I think I could have more gratitude. I think I could slow down a little bit more. So I'm going to enjoy going back and listening to this again. My pen starting tomorrow is going to hit my burn journal differently with a little more gratitude. And uh, I, I'm grateful for the impact you had on me through our time together. And I want to make sure every listener makes sure that they share this um, with somebody that where it can make a difference uh, in, in their life. So please share this episode. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be with you for the burn. And remember, it's that underlying burn that ignites your why and purpose and causes you to show up on the days you don't feel like it, and especially after you win. Matt, Shannon, thank you again.